Good afternoon and welcome to today's Ad Week webinar, where we will be sharing with you 2022's top search trends. Uh, and we're going to help you use that information so that you can leverage new strategies for your uh, SEM and SEO uh, efforts. And our webinar today is being sponsored by SimilarWeb. I'm Stuart File, Vice President of Branded Content at Adweek, and I'm going to be your host for today's webinar. Uh, before we begin, I'm just going to do oh, all the webinar host stuff, all the housekeeping things that you now expect at the top of a webinar. So uh, I'll try to go through all of this quickly, but we have our laundry list, and I want you to know what to expect. and Make sure you have a good experience. Uh, our presentation today should go somewhere in the 35, maybe 40 minute range. Uh, afterwards, we are going to have plenty of time for audience Q&A. So I want to invite everyone, if at any point during our presentation today, if you have a question for our speaker about any of the things that is being discussed today, uh, just use the question tool that you should see on the screen right underneath the video window uh, to submit your questions. And again, following our live presentation, we're going to get to as many audience questions as we can. Uh, it's not too late, by the way, to invite your colleagues to come and join us today, and we'd love it if they would. To make that easy for you, when we sent you a final reminder email for today's webinar about 15 minutes ago, we included a link to the registration page. So grab that link, send it off to your colleagues. They still have plenty of time to uh, register and come on in and join us live. But if they can't make it live, Today's webinar is being recorded and it will be available on demand. And we're gonna send you a link to that on-demand recording later this afternoon. So check your email about 3.30, 4 o'clock Eastern time. You will get that link to the on-demand version. So if you have to leave early because there's a sudden meeting, you can always come back and watch that recording later on. A lot of information is gonna get shared on today's webinar. It is very slide driven and there's a lot of charts and graphs and in really interesting uh, trend information. Uh, if you want to, uh, a PDF of the deck, we've made that available for you and you will find it in event resources. Uh, you should see that tab uh, down there on bottom of your screen near where you see the question tool. So feel free to go on in there at any point and, and grab a PDF of the deck. We know that's always a really good takeaway for people who attend our webinars. Uh, lastly, I just wanna remind everyone to check out the Adweek webinar calendar, www.adweek.com slash webinars. See what's coming up on the calendar. You'll probably see it when you log off. Uh, sign up for an upcoming webinar, lots of different topics, you know, things coming up on social, uh, website accessibility, uh, of course, uh, cookie-less future and everything that's involved in identity uh, and issues like that. See what's there, sign up for an upcoming webinar, check out the archive of on-demand webinars. Every webinar we've done over the past 12 months, you'll find some from our sponsors at SimilarWeb in there. Uh, again, adweek.com slash webinars. Let me just take a very brief moment here and introduce our speaker to you. We are joined today by Shahar Friedman, who is the Senior Solution Business Manager for Marketing Intelligence over at our sponsors at SimilarWeb. Uh, he's been working as a marketing and advertising professional uh, here in New York City for oh, over a day, almost two decades. Uh, and his experience really spans areas like TV, media buying, digital activation, across social, search, display, and more. We are really happy that he'll be here to share some of the insights uh, that Similar Web has on search. So without further ado, let me bring Shahar up on screen uh, to start our webinar. Shahar, welcome. Nice to have you here. Thank you very much, uh, Stuart, for uh, the warm uh, introduction. Uh, and I'm super excited uh, to share with you uh, this presentation. Um, there's a lot of interesting uh, stats in here that can help you um, optimize your campaign and understand how the industry that you are working in uh, is uh, performing. So, uh, with that, our agenda for today would be, uh, we'll go over paid search trends by industry, recovering industries, uh, ones that were affected. So 
everybody has been affected uh, by COVID. Um, so some industries are still recovering, some are growing uh, faster, and some are growing very moderately. We'll, we'll cover these. Then we'll look into uh, the top paid search uh, categories, uh, which, which industries are leading the pack. Then we'll look at the top uh, purchased uh, keywords in PPC, uh, both on spend and on visits. Um, those are two very different metrics. Uh, and then we'll look at uh, top spenders um, by specific industries, uh, and leave uh, some time for Q and A. Um, just so you understand, you know the reliability or like the source of the data. Um, so uh, I work at Similar Web, and I've done that uh, research myself. Um, we provide insights for our websites, apps, and basically anything that is uh, digital out there on the market, covering over a hundred million websites, four point seven million apps across the entire globe. Uh, we do have 210 industries, and, you know, I, I couldn't show all of them to you today, so I had to cherry-pick the ones that I thought were the most interesting and the most relevant uh, for us, especially in uh, online marketing uh, and, you know, online um, tools. Um, and the way that we collect data, we don't really have to go into this, but it's just to explain that we are using a lot of uh, both panel data and crawling data in, and statistics in order to get you the most accurate uh, data uh, that you need to make uh, some business decisions. Um, by means of this deck, unless it's unless it's uh, indicated otherwise, the timeline of the of the graphs that you're going to see is going to be for the past three years. Uh, so from uh, April uh, 2019 until the end of April this year. Uh, so you can really see the, the, the trend. Uh, and I will be calling out the, for 2022, like the past 12 months uh, performance and what we're seeing. Um, the geographies we cover are going to be worldwide and USA primarily and some UK statistics. Uh, worldwide is going to be in blue and USA is going to be in yellow uh, overlapping. So you can see the, the portion of US uh, as part of the entire uh, universe. Um, and this is the li long list of industries uh, we'll cover. So um, without further ado, um, we'll just look at the global trends now just uh, for a second. So this is the entire universe of paid search visits across the globe for the past three years. Uh, and as you can see, there are those spikes that are happening uh, during uh, the holidays, which we know is basically like the Super Bowl of uh, e-commerce. And you will see uh, that this is... Uh, Part of the uh, part of the drive that brings those waves up, and something super interesting to see is that since the outbreak around March 2020, um, these uh, waves have been growing and growing and growing. Um, under that, um, you can see the top uh, organic search visits, and you can see that there is this belly right next to our, when the outbreak happened which signifies how people were looking for, you know, um, data about uh, the specifics of like what to do during the pandemic and stuff like that. Um, but you see that it's not as affected as, uh, as uh, paid search. This is the only organic data that's going to be in here. Uh, overall, you know, if you're running a paid uh, search, um, paid search has so over a uh, 12 and a half uh, percent increase in the past uh, 12 months. So going strong uh, into uh, 2022. So we'll start with the recovering industries. And if there is a graph here that I think is very powerful, it's this one. Uh, look at the air travel. It has been um, a crazy ride for this industry. You see this, um, um, basically the, the entire industry went into a complete stop uh, once the outbreak has, um, has occurred in March. Uh, and since then, it has been um, 
growing steadily. And in the past um, 12 months, it even grew 104% uh, versus the year before that. So the airline industry, for at least from like a paid search perspective of advertising uh, for flights, is getting much better, but it's still not even at half of how it was uh, before the pandemic. And that's a very surprising thing, at least for me, because, you know, I'm seeing people flying a lot and, and, and doing, uh, you know, like traveling more. Uh, but I guess still with all the restrictions uh, around us with, um, for example, you can't enter the U.S. if you are not a citizen and you're not vaccinated. So things like that. Uh, affect uh, um, air travel significantly. And within the category of uh, um, travel, we also have uh, car rentals uh, and hotels. Um, and you can see that those two follow very much the same tra trajectory, uh, and they are both at a 70% increase uh, in the past 12 months, so that's really nice to see. Uh, and they're at about two-thirds of where they were um, before the pandemic. So their story is a little better than um, aviation. Um, and you can see that there are those big spikes during the summer of uh, uh, both 2020 and 2021 that helped uh, some of those um, industries recover. And then tourist attractions as well, like fairly similar to um, what we've seen with um, the car rentals and the hotels, but uh, they have a, a significant growth of like 212% in the past 12 months. Um, and it's about 70% of the activity uh, pre-pandemic. So tourist attractions are um, doing fairly well, um, but still recovering. Then surprisingly, telecommunications uh, has seen a 7% decrease in the past 12 months. Um, average activity is, you know, fairly flat from before and uh, after the pandemic. And I've been asking myself, you know, what's the driver of this? And it could be um, a slew of a lot of different reasons from new models of uh, like mobile devices not being having that significant change compared to uh, uh, compared to the previous generations um, or but you can also see how they also go by the e-commerce um, say sale um, increases during the holidays and moving into moderate growth we're seeing uh, the financial industry and uh, gambling um, growing 16%, 27% um, year over year in the past, from the past 12 months. Uh, and they both have seen, you know, a nice increase uh, since, the, since the pandemic. Uh, but, you know, you see that these graphs are not as volatile and they're, they show a steady, uh, slow and nice uh, growth for both. And by the way, uh, financial is one of the top uh, advertising industries. You'll see that uh, later on. So uh, for food and delivery and groceries, I actually wanted to put them both in the same graph for you so you can see the difference. But groceries can easily go into the extreme growth industries. Uh, food and delivery has been, uh, they, they, they saw uh, an, an increase of 13%. Uh, in the past 12 months, and groceries only 15%. Uh, but look at the difference from before the pandemic and after the pandemic, right? Um, food um, uh, groceries have grown significantly. Uh, it almost doubled its activity uh, from before the pandemic. So that trend of, you know, Instacart and, you know, ordering uh, your groceries online started before um, COVID, I remember I uh, used to order from Fresh Direct every now and again. But then when COVID hit, um, people just moved a lot more into that model of uh, instead of going into supermarkets, buying it. And that really helped people to adapt to it and continue shopping that way, even if the threat of COVID has uh, gone down in the past months. 
Um, and then auto industry, um, the auto industry grown like six and a half percent in the past 12 months, um, which is which is a fairly uh, slow increase. And uh, I think that that may be attributed to a lot of the supply chain issues that we've been seeing and also the move uh, to electric cars that's becoming more widespread and people are wondering, should I wait till they get a little cheaper? Should I buy another combustion engine uh, vehicle? Um, these could be some of the reasons for that. Now to the interesting part of uh, extreme growth industries, right? So uh, jobs and careers, um, wow, 38% growth in the past 12 months, uh, and it's beating the pre-pandemic numbers. Uh, so you can see how when the outbreak happened, everything went down uh, pretty fast, but the market has recovered extremely in that sense of uh, paid search. And you'll see that a lot of the uh, um, companies that are advertising, you know, they're uh, ones who specialize in uh, online job placements uh, like Indeed um, and, and, other, and other players. And you'll see some interesting words like CV, Builder, and, and you know, any kind of tool that is helpful for people to find uh, ways to, to get a job. Uh, and another stat here that I would uh, throw into the air that I'll show you later is that one of the uh, top words in uh, law and government uh, industry uh, is social security. Uh, and that is directly tied to the job and career. If you think about it, people uh, have been furloughed or gotten um, all kinds of um, financial help from governments uh, around the world and in the U.S. Uh, specifically um, during uh, this crisis. And now a lot of these plans have either like been canceled or have much stricter rules and people need to go back to uh to, to, the, to their jobs, and we're seeing how uh, the job industry is, has recovered. Um, and online marketing, 23% uh, in the past year alone, over doubling the, the pandemic, the pre-pandemic numbers. So um, you can start looking for a job in online marketing. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a, a, good, um, a good indication here. Um, so that's great to see because a lot of us are in this business, right? Um, and uh, we can also attribute that to the fact that a lot of us started buying more online. Uh, a lot of brick and mortar stores knew that they could not survive if they didn't start selling more online. And you'll see Shopify is one of the top words um, that uh, people bid a lot of money in order to be on. So with that, with a, with a, with a big shift into the online uh, um, e-commerce world and services comes also uh, online marketing. Next is um, arts and entertainment, uh, and specifically um, the streaming services. Uh, you see those also growing significantly, 36% uh, increase in the past 12 months, uh, and double the activity from 2019. So that's another thing that started happening uh, pre-pandemic and gotten a boost during the pandemic. Uh, so. We all know about cord cutting and, you know, uh, canceling your, uh, your cable subscription and, and moving to streaming services, uh, but that has gotten a significant boost during uh, COVID for a wide variety of reasons from like trying to save on uh, our money um, to many other reasons. So. And then uh, health and mental health. Uh, so obviously uh, health has been um, in, in our minds in the, ever since the uh, outbreak uh, during um, March, 2020. Um, and that situation with uh, the pandemic has caused a lot of um, anxiety and uh, issues for people losing their jobs, um, having to be stuck at home for a long time. 
And we see that in the graphs here of uh, health paid search visits and mental health paid search visits. Uh, and those include a lot of uh, the uh, services that are offered uh, online, companies like BetterHelp uh, and others, and all kinds of other services that have to do with COVID, like COVID testing, um, et cetera. Uh, home and garden, uh, law and government, uh, you see these from March 2020, just like jumping and staying um, really high. And um, you'll see that uh, law and government is uh, driven by a lot of these um, terms that are relevant to people losing their job or in need for help, governmental help uh, of uh, support uh, because of their situation, losing their job or getting ill. Um, and home and garden has been a lot about, I guess, when people are uh, staying at home or working more from home, they um, turn to companies like Home Depot um, and Ace and others in order to uh, like make their house a little more fun uh, working from there uh, or, you know, just having that be your office now. So you want to you want to enjoy your time there more, maybe have more free time on your hands. And uh, e-commerce and lifestyle, um, not surprisingly, you see those huge waves, I um, feel like you're in Hawaii, uh, of e-commerce uh, and during uh, and lifestyle during uh, um, the holiday seasons. Uh, really, every time there is a wave like that, it's almost doubling the baseline and you see those waves are getting bigger and the baseline is getting bigger so all, um, all in all they're influenced highly by holiday season uh, and they've seen increases of 25 percent compared to uh, 2019 with a three percent increase and 15 percent increase uh, um, in activity over the uh, past 12 months respectively. Uh, you'll see that e-commerce is driven a lot by terms like Amazon, um, Target, and other, uh, those uh, big e-commerce companies. And then science edu and education and uh, video game consoles, uh, they've seen a, um, a nice increase. Um, for science and education, you know, we, we saw a huge boom uh, in the second half of 2020. Uh, and we know that this is because of a lot of these remote solutions that uh, people resorted to because they could not go into the class or they could not study or teach. Uh, so a lot of us have had to find other, other um, channels or other ways to, to study. Uh, and for video game consoles, you see that they are fairly even, um, which was surprising to me. I thought people will have more time on their hands and, you know, um, play more games. Hence, you will see more uh, search campaigns, but not as much. Uh, and that giant uptick that we're seeing in the past 12 months, that 29% and this big wave um, in October, 2021 is due to the uh, Nintendo Switch OLED release. Uh, just drove the market crazy. And by means of sports, uh, it's driven by seasonality of sports. Uh, obviously, you know, baseball season, football season, NBA season, at least in the U.S. Uh, and soccer and other sports uh, in uh, the rest of the uh, rest of the world. Um, and we're seeing a really big spike in sports in the past 12 uh, uh, months, 11% uh, in the past year and 50% overall compared to uh, pre-pandemic uh, numbers. Um, so now we'll move uh, into the top paid search categories real quick. Um, so, and, and don't worry, like you can, um, as Stuart said, you can download uh, this presentation in its entirety. Um, as a PDF format, so you can really um, dig dig deeper and 
see all of these um, categories and keywords that we're going to go over now. Obviously, we cannot go over each and every one of these um, uh, keywords or categories. So I encourage you to download that PDF and you know take your time to enjoy reading through that. So um, in the um, in the world uh, for the past three years, by means of span, uh, computers and electronics, finance, and uh, e-commerce have been the top three uh, industries to spend uh, money on paid uh, search, um, with the first one going over seven and a half billion dollars, um, and the second one being at around six billion dollars. So um, really high budgets uh, for 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 these guys. Um, and the picture does not change much when you look at US and when you look at UK, right? So when we do that, you see that those three, the top three or four categories remain within the same kind of uh, realm. So computer electronics, finance, e-commerce, home and garden, lifestyle, and in the UK, computer electronics, home and garden, finance, lifestyle, e-commerce. So they they change a bit um, based on the specific uh, locality needs, um, but they stay fairly consistent uh, across the, the board. Um, and then by means of uh, top purchased keywords by spend. So I want to explain a little bit what does it mean by spend versus by um uh, versus by visits. So a keyword can have not as many visits, but it could be super, super expensive. So when we look at it by spend, it's gauging how much money this word has generated uh, due to like being bid on. So that's the amount of the average bid times the the the, the amount of visits that we've seen. Whereas when we're looking at the uh, visits, it's just going by visits. Uh, so it's not necessarily tied to spend. And in most cases, you'll see the most expensive words are going to appear uh, under the spend columns. So big surprise for me was to see that worldwide, Google Ads um, as a search term is really uh, the top uh, revenue maker um, worldwide in the U.S. I think it was second, and third. Yeah. So I've I've tried to understand why, and I went into um, Google's own keyword planner as well to 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 see, and I've seen that this keyword uh, is extremely expensive. It can go up towards like three hundred and even four hundred dollars a click. Uh, and you see huge corporations um, bidding on that word, like Microsoft, Apple, and others. Um, and with the rise of online marketing category that we've seen um, and online marketing tools, no wonder um, that a lot of companies are bidding on that, uh, that word. And add to that Google, uh, which would, is the top spender in advertising, um, obviously they own it, so they probably give themselves a nice discount. Uh, but um, Google themselves uh, bid on that word uh, in order to make sure that they have brand protection. So that all in all together is the driver behind that. You see car insurance coming in very high, uh, and you see Shopify, uh, which makes total sense because with the move to um, online uh, sales for a lot of small businesses and medium-sized businesses that relied more on brick and mortar and now they needed to sell or disappear, um, they needed a, a, a website and they needed a way to you know, charge their, for, for, for their products and ship them and manage all of that. And that's what Shopify and uh, its competitors do, and you see a lot of competitive bids on Shopify from companies like Wix. And in the US only, you see car insurance, eBay, and Google Ads, 
and then more car insurance um, search terms. Uh, so the, those fights you see for car insurance on TV, like with Geico uh, and um, basically everybody on, on the, the general and everybody on the planet, the progressive, that fight is happening on, on search as well. Uh, and those companies are putting in big bucks in order to make sure that they come up when somebody Googles for car insurance. Um, in the UK, it was surprisingly compared to market um, as, the, as the third uh, search term here. Um, so they, are, they must be a, a very big uh, and agree to pay real high uh, bids in order to, uh, to win their brand protection there. Um, by means of top purchased keywords by visits, uh, then we can see here that uh, that's a little more predictable for us, right? So Amazon and AliExpress uh, on worldwide, uh, they come in as, uh, as first. Canva was slightly surprising for me. Uh, and then more of the, of the uh, Amazon terms, like Amazon Prime uh, and uh, other big retailers. Um, Sheen was also a surprise for me uh, because, you know, they sell bathing suits and other uh, clothing uh, online. So it was very surprising for me to see how uh, big of uh, budgets they have or for their competitors to to um, to advertise and come in at the at the top ten and with the, with the, with the, all the big guns here. Uh, this is the view for uh, US uh, only. You can see Amazon, Amazon Prime and uh, Walmart uh, coming in uh, as the first keywords and then uh, HBO. Um, and Etsy has, that has been growing very nicely since the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, it was growing even before that, and um, the beginning of a pandemic brought both sellers and buyers to Etsy, uh, and we see it uh, across the board. And then from a, a, we'll look a little bit on select industries in that sense real quick. So top air travel, we see South, uh, Southwest Airlines, Qatar Airways, LATAM, so mostly branded, mostly branded uh, search terms for specific uh, uh, airlines. Um, and then uh, for telecom, again, big companies like Vodafone, um, Orange, uh, T-Mobile, uh, and Verizon. Uh, and for financial, uh, PayPal, who also owns Venmo, um, and it's not surprising to me that um, a lot of companies are bidding on PayPal, especially from a competitive standpoint. There has been a lot of companies that um, started working, you know, in the past few years in the services of either sending or transferring money and also in the industry uh, of, you know, charging credit cards like Square. Uh, and all of these companies uh, that support small businesses and small businesses online as well, all of them uh, probably bid on uh, PayPal in order to, uh, to see traffic coming in. Uh, TurboTax, uh, big in uh, the U.S. Uh, for, for your taxes. Um, and then, you know, the, the credit cards, uh, banks like Capital One, American Express. And careers, like I mentioned before, Indeed, Job Street, Seek, and CV template. So, like CV template is uh, for people who are looking for a job and need to like iron out their uh, their um, resumes. And then the top three here are uh, those uh, companies that um, are helping you to find a job online. Uh, home and Garden, uh, those big big companies like uh, Home Depot, IKEA. Lows. Um, and this is the law and government that I mentioned before. So social security, social security login. You see all of these, uh, my social security, all of these um, search terms, uh, probably of companies that are trying to help people that are in need of something from social security. Um, 
which has grown significantly in the past three years because of the effects of the pandemic. Um, so if you're a lawyer that deals with that, if you're a company that's providing relief, whether you are an NGO or for profit, uh, you will target these keywords. Arts and entertainment, so streaming services dominate here, right? Disney Plus, Spotify, Amazon Prime, HBO Max, YouTube, you name it. Uh, that matches what we've seen with uh, streaming services as part of being the uh, uh, part of A&E. And e-commerce, Amazon, AliExpress, Amazon Prime, Etsy, uh, not, not too many surprises here. This one was a surprise for me that Sheen is spending so much money in the past 12 months uh, or companies that are bidding on like Sheen as competitors. Um, almost, what's that? Almost $50 million um, in the past 12 months alone on that keyword. Um, that's a lot. Um, and science and education. Um, we're seeing, you know, uh, Udemy, which is um, somewhere you can get uh, free courses online uh, and teach yourself Grammarly. And so you can uh, fix your grammar as you write uh, emails or uh, any of that stuff, Coursera. So we're seeing a lot of these um, self-learn, self-getting better um, online stuff um, through science and education. And sports here includes a mixture of um, streaming services like The Zone with uh, big retailers like uh, Decelon and um, Adidas and uh, some specific uh, sports like NBA. Um, and we're almost done. Uh, this is our um, slide for top paid search spenders worldwide. So you can see that Google is the top spender. Um, and after that is Amazon uh, and uh, Wayfair and Walmart. Um, I'm not very surprised by it, although I would think that Amazon and Google would be a little closer, but maybe uh, our projections cannot take into consideration uh, what Google is giving itself pro bono, uh, and Google owns paid search, so maybe the value of what they're giving themselves overall is higher than what Amazon is paying for. And uh, a little bit of funny stuff here. These are the most expensive uh, search terms in the past 12 months for real. So make sure that if you are in Houston, Texas, you stay away from 18-wheeler uh, trucks. Uh, and if you're in LA, you don't get bitten by a dog uh, because these are some of those uh, top search terms, uh, like auto accident lawyer in uh, Houston, 18-wheeler uh, accident lawyer near me, and dog bite uh, lawyers in Los Angeles. All of these people have bid and paid over $1,500 a click. I'm not even talking about a guaranteed visit or a page view or a specific time. I'm talking about just a click to site. Um, so I find that um, amazing. Um, and just to uh, quickly uh, conclude here, um, why was this all um, possible for us is the similar web advantage in the sense that we see all paid keywords and ads that drive traffic to your competition. Uh, we can identify gaps and opportunities uh, and get closer to what you need in, in terms of mobile and paid search. And we also have a zero click search metrics. So all of these capabilities are helping us with understanding uh, both big picture data as I've shown you today, but also um, data that is for your business. So if you are Gap and you want to know as compared to H&M, for example, which keywords they're using in paid, which keywords I'm using in paid, where do they overlap and where are opportunities for me as Gap to steal some of those keywords from H&M and where do I lose to H&M? Uh, on bids, and I should modify those bids for my, my keywords. Or which keywords should I 
even buy based on zero click searches. Zero click searches are keywords that people are searching with but never end up clicking on. So maybe you don't want to invest in words like that that are not getting any traffic, even though you can see that traffic volume looks pretty uh, decent, they may not get to you. Um, so we do all of that and more, and that's what, uh, what made it all possible for, for today. Um, and with that, I would turn it back to Stuart uh, for our Q&A session. Great. Well, thank you, Shahar. Uh, enjoyed that. A lot, a lot of interesting stuff. Let me, uh, I know we've been doing this, but let me take the slides down because we are going to go into Q&A here. Um, before, I, let, let me give you a chance to get a, catch your breath and uh, t take a sip of water here. But for our audience, I just yeah. want to remind you, uh, we are going to have about 10 minutes plus for some audience questions. And we have a number of them queued up. So I just want to invite everyone, if anybody does have uh, a question on anything related to paid search and some of the trends identified, simply submit your question using the question tool. We're going to get to as many as we can again, over these next 10 minutes. A couple quick reminders. Uh, today's webinar has been recorded. You're going to find get a link to that on-demand version in your inbox about 3.30, 4 o'clock. Certainly feel free to share that link with your colleagues. If you've got someone involved in, uh, in paid search, share, share the link with them. Uh, they can, again, catch this or better yet, have them register. We'll send them the link directly. Uh, and as we've mentioned, again, the slides for today's presentation are available in event resources. You should see that tab on your screen uh, underneath where you see uh, the video window right now. Uh, so Shahar, let's let's get to some of these uh, pretty, pretty quickly. And, you know, one of the things that we talked a little bit about, right, which um, you, you were talking about, like the difference between when, when we're looking at, um, at results, right, the difference between uh, keywords uh, and or the, the, the terms versus the topics uh, at, as, as we look at some of this. And so with, with that in mind, right, as, as, as you're thinking of, uh, uh, right, again, uh, so some of these terms, when you're seeing a term that is so high priced, you used Google ads, uh, right? Dog bites and 18 wheelers. How should a brand ultimately approach that so they don't find themselves, you know, caught in one of these enormous bidding wars, uh, right? Should you be using this information to identify that and start to think of like, what are some of the alternative terms we should be using? What, what sort of action can someone take actually knowing some of these things? Exactly. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. So I think um, one way of uh, avoiding this uh, is like try not to go directly and bid. Like you can leave a little bit of the uh, of the budget on those uh, specific big uh, keywords, but you want to try to find alternatives, uh, whether it's synonyms or other keywords that your audience, your target audience uh, is looking for, but are not going to be necessarily that mainstream and can get you a lot more efficiency. Mm -hmm. That will get you efficiency um, both on cost per click, uh, but many times also on your, on your conversion rate, because when there's a lot of companies bidding for the same, uh, for the same uh, keyword and the user keeps seeing like different kinds of uh, um, ads out there and like you have a smaller quote unquote share of voice on a specific word, then it can affect uh, your numbers. Yeah. And for that I would recommend uh, using something like the keyword generator where you can put in a keyword and it will find a lot of keywords that are not necessarily, by the way, contextually relevant, but keywords that we know drive traffic uh, to, this, to the same page from paid search, but you know, in a, that is a, a different keyword that is mm -hmm. cheaper for you or that is going to have a better outcome. Yeah, I know one of the things, Shahar, when we did a, a previous webinar with Similar Web and we were talking about paid search is also understanding sort of like the categories of paid search, right? As you're going through there, uh, you know, are you looking in terms, right? Are you 
do you rise high on the main Google page or are you better served rising high on the video page or rising high on the shopping page uh, as some of that? So are there are there strategies as you look at this that that can be applied in that arena as well? Uh, I mean, it depends on how much you bid because that that would also drive your position on which page you, uh, your um, audience is going to see the ad. Um, I want to differentiate between, you know, SEO and SEM in the sense that, you know, SEO is organic and that mm -hmm. opens up the whole, you know, I want to be uh, on top of the SERP, controlling the SERP and all of that stuff. Paid is a fairly different game because, you know, you, it's, it's all about the bid. It's all about who is bidding on your brand, who's, who you can bid on their brand and like how can you get those uh, users to convert. Got it, got it. Um, it raised another question which came up, which is understand, right, the numbers that we're sharing here are paid. Uh, and you say, again, paid versus organic is a different beast. Should they, I mean, ultimately, should you be approaching these differently? How do you get them to work together? And I mean, if we were to run the same report, and I think this is what the one person was asking, uh, and we ran it for, you know, for the SEO versus the SEM side, of this, would we see things differently? I'm sure we'd see like the same similar spikes uh, by industry as you were going through here. But um, you know, what? Why the difference, and what would we, you know, in in your opinion, would we be seeing differently? Obviously, there's there's more research you could be doing on this. Yeah, and I actually uh, I have the numbers not modeled yet, but uh, when we pulled, we pulled everything. So. Um, I'll take you back to the second slide. Surprisingly, you don't see a lot of fluctuations uh, on organic uh, for the entire universe. Um, you see those spikes happen more uh, in paid search. Um, and I think that uh, ways that you, well, uh, maybe, I'll, uh, maybe I'll address your, the first question first. What, what can you do with SEO to complement this, uh, um, to complement this research? So, I would say for words that we're seeing that are very uh, common, try to win them through SEO and not necessarily through uh, SEM. So if we're seeing that these words are like super expensive to get to uh, with, uh, with paid search, try to get them with organic search SEO techniques, mm -hmm. whether it's putting in back, more backlinks or you know, doing technical SEO on your, on your website to make sure that the crawlers can see that specific page as a really good um, answer to the, the keyword uh, Google Ads. So maybe you're not going to buy Google Ads for $400 a click, but from, a, from an organic search, you may be able to get yourself into one of the first pages results and you can mitigate that uh, or like can get that added value just by knowing what works on paid search that you may not want to spend money on. Got it. Uh, by means of how the graphs would look um, on in, in organic, I would assume that they would look vastly different because we have to remember that sometimes paid search is used to um, try to mitigate losses or, or problems like so it's not necessarily good. Paid, paid search is sometimes uh, can grow when a company is losing and is not getting as many organic people, and it's trying to compensate by bringing more people in, right? By mm -hmm. by like trying to generate more business by investing in paid search. So I wouldn't necessarily think that the organic graphs are going to look the same. If anything, I think that in the big ones, yes, maybe in the aviation, probably. Mm -hmm. But in some other industries, I would assume that they would be a, a little less um, volatile, if I should say. Got it. Got it. Uh, one of the things we know about search is search behavior is changing, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, some of us are still, you know, like me, and you know, you like to go to Google.com or you go to your, uh, or you go to your bar and you just throw a term in and, and it comes through. But there is obviously an enormous growth in terms of like voice search. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also growth. Look, I, 
I've got a 20 year old at home. And I know that if, if, if he goes to go search for things, he's more likely as likely to search, right? Pro find a new product. They're going to, it goes to Amazon to search, um, goes to social to search, right? I want, I want to see what people are talking about, not what people, what, what necessarily the search engine is going to deliver to me. So as you do all that, let's, let's maybe just start with voice search. Uh, because, of course, again, right, everything from Alexa to Siri to everything else, uh, a lot of people just grab their phone and it's like, that's why near me searches uh, are, are are so high. So what are some of the things that should be considered on that? And are you seeing, in fact, like a growth of that sort of things really being phrased and and, and paid search terms going up for things that are really optimized for voice? That's a, a great question. So. If I was planning for, uh, you know, investing more in uh, paid search, I, so paid search works usually uh, for the specific platform you're on. So Google Assistant mm -hmm. is going to look on Google. Amazon is going to look on Amazon, at least for, you know, product, uh, product and things like that. That's why uh, we added at similar web a lot of these places where you can run you know a keyword uh, gener like you run a keyword generator or like a keyword plan and learn uh, which words you you want to mm -hmm. be on and that will apply uh, both for SEO and SEM in that sense mm -hmm. so because you wanna you want to cater for both so you're able to because when you when you when you voice search something on on um, Google Assistant it basically writes the question into the into uh, um, mm -hmm. into the browser, right? So there is not a lot of ways for us to capture exactly what was voice and what was not voice uh, activated, but mm -hmm. we know that because these devices are so easily used, it actually brings up the search volume because now you don't, in the past, if you needed to search for something, you needed to take out your phone or you needed to open up the computer and go to google.com and start searching. Nowadays, you just yell, hey, Alexa, what's this and that? And Alexa would perform the search for you, right? So um, we see a lot more uh, searches coming in. And there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of opportunities there, but I would say that uh, most of the opportunities for voice search, if you think about it, are for SEO, uh, because mm -hmm. at least if you are using an Alexa device that cannot show you sponsored uh, ads, but it, it's gonna give you it's gonna give you an answer, right? So you, right. you, you want to be part of the answer, basically. You want to be part of that answer. Right, you don't you don't go and say, uh, "Hey Alexa, please show me the sponsored results for exactly. uh, restaurant for restaurant hours near me." But if you right. ask, but if you yeah. ask her, you know, what should I what should I read on the weekend? You want her to say, "I recommend Ed Week," and that yeah. would be, <laughs> and that would be part of the um, organic effort of sh showing that Ed Week is one of the top. Got it. Uh, Right. Yeah, to to totally get it. Shahar, we are we are out of time. Uh, so thank you for, again, sharing all the data that you went through uh, and also for taking some time to take some of these audience questions uh, to our audience. If we didn't have a chance to get to your question, uh, we always forward them all over to our sponsors. So there's the opportunity for some offline responses. Uh, as we finish this up, let me just provide just a few uh, final reminders here. Again, you're getting that link to On Demand, so check your email 3.30, 4 o'clock today. If you haven't yet, go on into Event Resources, grab that PDF of today's deck. Uh, and lastly, adweek.com slash webinars, our webinar calendar. See what's coming up. Sign up for an upcoming webinar. Check out the Ar On Demand archive as well. Uh, so again, I just want to thank our sponsors today from Similar Web and our speaker today, uh, Shahar Friedman. Uh, I want to thank our audience for taking time out of your busy day, and we look forward to seeing everyone at an upcoming Ad Week webinar. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.